A large sand bank along the Chambal River started fading away in 2013. The landscape that probably took decades to form had become a habitat for crocodiles and other wildlife. How did it begin disappearing? Rampant mechanized sand mining. Excess extraction of sand from riverbeds and shores has destroyed habitats, changed the course of rivers, eroded banks and swallowed up villages in India and worldwide. The resource that seems abundant and often ignored is the second most extracted one, just after water. While people and ecosystems continue to get affected today, a big challenge remains to understand the exact impacts of the industry and to improve monitoring and implement laws. Our society is heavily reliant, in fact built, on this natural resource. The world uses up to 50 billion metric tons of sand and gravel, collectively called aggregates, every year. That's an average of 18 kg per person per day. Over half of that amount is used by the construction industry to make cement and concrete. And the manufacturing of our smartphones, glass, all need sand. China and India are the two leading countries extracting sand at a rate that exceeds natural renewal rates. The need is rising to feed the construction boom, and that mainly requires sand from rivers and shorelines. The demand for sand is so high that India imports sand. Inadequate governance and monitoring have given way to unregulated and illegal sand mining. Sand mining-related operations have taken the lives of workers and people opposing it villagers, journalists, and government officials. As courts, as uh, even the, the policies, we are not too much focusing about sustainable mining or unsustainable mining. We are still on legal and illegal. So we need to shift that approach now, that whether uh, the mining is sustainable or not. The world needs to find sustainable ways to use this resource and also alternatives to it. Looking at these different ways of reducing our sand requirement, one is looking at alternative materials, two, looking at alternative techniques to reduce consumption of RCC. We in our buildings are able to reduce our sand consumption to 90-95% compared to the olden days. While there are efforts in India and world over to make this possible, we still have a long way to go. But first, where does this sand come from? Natural processes slowly break down hard rocks into finer elements such as mineral sand. As rivers flow from highlands to low-lying areas, they bring this sediment with them. Sand is a key ingredient that makes a river, not just water. Sand filters water, recharges groundwater and sustains biodiversity. If you take away excess sand from the river, it can drastically change course, cause floods in one place and water scarcity in another. As a river meanders through various states, boulders, gravel and sand are extracted from many points of the riverbed. Mining at one point eventually affects the entire river ecosystem. And the fact that rivers pass through different administrative regions makes the implementation of laws more challenging. Each state has a different process of providing environmental clearances and monitoring the mines. And every sand mining project has a set of rules and guidelines to follow. Still, Unregulated and illegal sand mining is rampant across India's rivers. Kiranpal Rana is a farmer near the Yamuna River flowing along the Haryana Uttar Pradesh border. Take a look at the map of the same mining site. The red lines indicate the clearance given to it. But look at the area actually excavated and the resulting change in the river and its floodplain. A sand mining operation can be considered illegal if it has exceeded its permitted boundary or depth, or if it used unauthorized machinery, or extracted more sand than approved. And yes, there are other factors too. Ultimately, whether legal or illegal, sand mining has a human and environmental cost and also hits the state revenue. 
mismanagement of sand and undocumented money is loss making to the economy it inflates the purchasing cost for the consumer but is profitable for a handful a lot of illegal sand mining has observed that there is connivance of police and district administration so sometimes this is the biggest limitation like even if we have we get you know as a lawyer when we go argue in the court we get good orders from the court there is no compliance at the district level because these are like big mafias they are like you know an, these are like highly corrupted people and uh, even when we talk about compliance when 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 i say that they impose penalty or there is strict action being taken they pick up people you know the villagers the local inhabitants who are actually doing it because they want money because they have to work somewhere these are not those big mafias who are being put behind the jails people who are doing mining at the field who are not responsible it's the mining lease holders who are responsible how is the government tackling the issue in 2016 it had published guidelines for sustainable sand mining and also proposed methods to curb illegal mining There are plans to create no mining zones to protect rivers and those who depend on them. The guidelines emphasize the involvement of the general public and local inhabitants in regulating mining. For now, illegal extraction continues. While the industry is responsible for several issues, sand is an essential resource. Our growing cities, economy and several livelihoods depend on it. There is ongoing research, attempts to recycle material and also find substitutes for natural sand. Mongabi India spoke to a sustainable design and architecture firm to know about some of the alternatives. So in our type of construction we use quarry dust which is a byproduct of uh, stone coring so we use that as an alternative for sand apart from it uh, people have widely started using uh, manufactured sand that's n sand there are also efforts to use construction debris to make finer aggregates but most of our construction debris ends up in landfills or is illegally dumped in river beds or roads you're uh, reducing the virgin materials consumption and replacing it with the recycled uh, fine aggregates given that there is no consistency in the kind of waste what we get the segregation is also a challenge in the current days More research and support is needed to make alternatives mainstream, but it needs to start somewhere. The UN Sand and Sustainability Report calls sand and gravel extraction one of the major sustainability challenges of the 21st century. There is an urgent need to eliminate the gap between the scale of the problem and public awareness of it. We need to create and adapt solutions ensuring that the local communities benefit from the sector and habitats are not lost forever. Explore Monga Bay India's Just Transition series to understand mining's impact on people and the environment.